So now in our studio, uh, in Yerevan studio, uh, we have our guest today, uh, United States District Judge John Kuhner, and he's, he's, uh, he's in Armenia, uh, and his uh, main goal in Armenia to train Armenian judges. Uh, hello, Mr. Kuhner, and uh, um, Your Honor, I'm going to talk about basically about the Armenian judiciary system, uh, and uh, what are you going to tell your colleagues in Armenia? And let me start by asking you uh, that, that many uh, countries in the former Soviet Union are trying really to improve their judiciary to become, to make it more independent from executive uh, branch. But it seems to me in that in many cases, the success, uh, the, the, the story is not a success story. What you can tell us about Armenia case? Well, I think, you know, uh, let me start by saying that uh, I have for uh, uh, over 30 years now been working with uh, the, the Soviet republics and then the former Soviet republics uh, on, on these same questions. Uh, I've dealt with uh, Russian judges and judges in Ukraine and Belarus and Georgia uh, and all over Russia. Uh, and it's, uh, these, these issues have been very similar in, in uh, all the former Soviet republics. So the, uh, uh, the thing I would emphasize is that, that uh, the, the judges all uh, welcome, in, in my experience, the opportunity to uh, talk about how they can improve their relationship with the, uh, the public and enhance their, uh, their, uh, the public's confidence in the judiciary, uh, and uh, what I've been doing is not necessarily uh, an analysis of, of uh, what I think they should do differently, but rather uh, sharing ideas of things that they might want to think about doing uh, to enhance their, uh, their credibility with the public and with the international business community. Yeah, uh, Your Honor, uh, in, in Armenia, many believe that, you know, that the telephone justice is in place. And, uh, and in, in many cases, uh, people, opposition especially, would criticize the Armenian authorities for uh, actually uh, controlling the, 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 the judges. And we hear that many questions, uh, many issues and court cases are being decided not in the courtrooms but rather in Bagramian 26. This is the address where the presidential headquarters are and the one phone call from the presidential office can solve the issue um, and we call this telephone justice and this is the case not only in Armenia but in many other Soviet uh, republics as you may know. Would you please talk about that uh, and to what extent uh, is, uh, is this a problem in Armenia and how you're trying to, you know, to talk to your colleagues to improve this, uh, to, to fix this problem? Well, as, as a, a guest in your country, I don't think it's appropriate for me to, to uh, uh, judge uh, how your judiciary uh, performs. I can observe that, that in the other former Soviet republics, uh, there was a, a period of transition after the collapse of the Soviet Union where uh, the relationship between the executive branch and the, and the judiciary evolved in a, in a positive way. Uh, and that, that uh, I see signs in this country that, uh, that uh, people of goodwill are, are uh, anxious and, and, and encouraged to uh, uh, enhance the, the, uh, the credibility of the judiciary with your public uh, and, and, as I said, with the international business community. The, these things take time. Uh, they, uh, you can't just snap your finger and change uh, 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 80 years of experience uh, with the Soviets and, and say that now this is a, a, a new time and, and therefore everything's going to be different overnight. Uh, but the, 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 if, if, if the experience of the the other Soviet republics that I've dealt with is any indicator. Uh, there is much reason for uh, the optimism uh, in these areas. And you know, the United States is not a saint when it comes to these things. We have history of, uh, of the efforts of, of the executive branch to try to, to uh, influence the judiciary. This happened during the Nixon administration in a rather uh, embarrassing way. 
uh, it's not unnatural for people who are in powerful positions to uh, uh, want to uh, have an, an effect on, on important decisions that are made by others. Uh, but uh, with the passage of time and, and uh, the maturity of, of the judiciary, uh, these things change. Your Honor, there, there is also some uh, problem in, in, uh, in, in the laws. For example, the laws are vague uh, uh, by design and therefore anybody who the regime finds inconvenient can be persecuted. This is the case not only, I'm talking about in general, for, for the countries of former Soviet Union. Uh, how is there any attempt uh, on the way to fix, uh, to improve the, the law? of the country. Oh, I think so. Uh, they, you know, it's not my role to come here and help them draft legislation, yes. of course, but, but uh, one of the things that, that strikes me when I come to uh, uh, countries like Armenia is that uh, there's an enormous amount of attention that's being paid to the redrafting of legislation, far more than, than uh, takes place in the United States, for example. Uh, but you're dealing with, uh, with a transition period here that uh, is historic in significance, and it, uh, it it's not surprising that uh, uh, changing from the Soviet system to a, a different system would require people to pay a lot of attention to the old laws and whether they uh, fit well with the new freedoms and, and uh, uh, the exciting new opportunities that exist in this country. Uh, Your Honor, uh, the, the largest, pro the biggest prog problem maybe for the judiciary of all these countries is a corruption. Uh, corruption is rather a feature. <laughs> uh, it became a feature of judicial system and, and it's, uh, it's high and it's not going anywhere. It's not, despite many, many, many promises that the government and uh, the government yeah, makes and there is no improvement in that sense. And, you know, the salaries of judges were, have been raised, but it didn't help. But although I think that uh, the problem is again in the payment, in the salaries of uh, the judges, as many experts would believe. But do you think that there is an effective mechanism to eradicate uh, corruption from justice system? Well, you know. Uh there's always the potential for corruption uh, where you have people exercising uh, awesome powers and judges exercise awesome powers. Once again, this is an area that uh, the United States is not a saint about. Uh, we've had our own problems in the United States with, with judicial corruption in Phil Philadelphia and Chicago. Uh, the, uh, the one encouraging thing I would offer and suggest to you is that uh, uh, most people don't become judges because they want to make a lot of money. Most people become judges because they believe in the system and believe in the concept of justice. Uh, and people who, who uh, sell that concept for, uh, for money are not worthy of the title of judge. Uh, and uh, my experience in dealing with, and I've, I've traveled to the former Soviet Union, I think this is my 14th trip now. Uh, my experience has been that, that uh, people of goodwill are working hard to, uh, to gain the confidence of the public uh, and the international community. Uh, and that uh, it's, it's happening, it's happening rather dramatically in Russia. Uh, and the, the biggest change in Russia was uh, the, uh, the compensation of the judiciary. Uh, it was uh, dramatically increased uh, during the Yeltsin period. And uh, a lot of the complaints you heard about uh, telephone justice in Russia, uh, the, in my last few trips there, uh, there's far less discussion of that subject than there was in the earlier days. Uh, and I, again, it, it, these things take time, and, and uh, it's the human condition to progress as time passes, and, and it's, uh, it's going to happen here also. I'm much encouraged with the, uh, the people, particularly the young people that I talk to here who uh, recognize that they are in a very historic moment in this country. They have an enormous opportunity uh, to take this, this beautiful country and these charming people and, and introduce them to the world in a way that they haven't been known up till now. The, uh, the tourism industry, the international uh, business community, 
all are turning their attention uh, to Armenia because of the, the beauty of the country and the opportunities that are here. So it's, it's, it, it, it's critically important at this stage of this country's development that its judiciary be one that, that uh, travelers, business travelers and tourists and business investors can look to uh, this country and say, you know, I have no fear about investing in Armenia because I trust the courts, I trust uh, the ability to, to have my disputes resolved in a fair and just way, uh, for tourists to be able to say, I have no concerns about traveling in Armenia, and I can tell you, having been here for the better part of a week now, I, I feel more comfortable walking on the streets of Yerevan late at night than I do on the streets of Washington, D.C. It's a <laughs> That's very interesting. <laughs> yeah, good. <laughs> uh, Your Honor, uh, there is another thing uh, that I would like to discuss with you. For example, uh, how we can make, uh, you know, judges more independent of, uh, you know, executive uh, branch. For example, can we, do you, are you, uh, you know, telling them how to improve the system of appointment of judges? Maybe they will be, they have to be elected. Um, you know, what, what are you telling them? The well, Armenian you know, authority, I, 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 I'm not here to comment really on how yes. they select judges. And in fact, if they ask me, whether it would be wise to go to a system where judges were elected, I would say no, absolutely not. Uh, I think mm -hmm. any time you have judges who worry about whether a decision that they make might have an impact on whether they retain their position, that's unhealthy. And in our system, in the United States, uh, the yes. federal judiciary has lifetime tenure. And I can tell you that, that as a, a very real and very practical matter, that uh, it is a great comfort to me when I make difficult decisions that I know the public uh, uh, has a hard time understanding that at least I don't have to worry about losing my job. Uh, that's, uh, <clears throat> now th there are other areas where I think that the experience I've had in, in the former Soviet Union and in the United States uh, can help uh, a lot in this country. For example, I think that the relationship between the judiciary and, and uh, the press, journalists, uh, is something that, uh, that we have uh, been developing uh, in, in the United States and uh, beginning to understand that, that uh, if the press has more access uh, to uh, mm -hmm. uh, our proceedings and more uh, ability to understand uh, why we do the things we do, uh, then the, uh, the, the ability of the press in turn to in, in encourage, in, in educate uh, the, the public and encourage them to uh, have more confidence in the judiciary is also enhanced. Uh, the, uh, and, and, and that relationship with, between the, the, the courts and the public is another area where we've been focusing more attention in the United States uh, in recent years. For example, I'm going to encourage the judges here to uh, to uh, never ever say no if you're asked by a teacher of, uh, of high school age students to come speak to a class. Uh, and never ever say no if you're asked by a, uh, a teacher to uh, preside over a mock trial in your courtroom or to invite students to come into your courtroom and watch the proceedings. Uh, it, the more people see of the, 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 the court system and the, the, the less mysterious it becomes and the more comfortable they become in, in uh, uh, feeling uh, confident that the system is working as it should. Uh, it's very easy to jump to the conclusion that, uh, that, that uh, decisions are being made for the wrong reasons if you aren't a participant in the process and, and don't know all the facts that the judge was dealing with when he or she made the decision. Uh, and the, if, if the, the, the proceedings of the court are open and public and in the sunlight and accessible by members of the press, uh, then the ability of the public to, uh, to know and understand things uh, about uh, the courts is substantially enhanced. Uh, Your Honor, you have, did you ever meet uh, uh, Armenian-Americans in your state, uh, 
you know, you have friend, Armenian American friend. I, I'm, I'm just asking if you are aware of the Armenian diaspora. Um, uh, have you been uh, you know, dealing with uh, diaspora issues uh, in the United States? I, I haven't. Of... I've been dealing with diaspora issues, but uh, uh, you can't live in the United States and be uh, unaware of the Armenian diaspora. <laughs> uh, one of our uh, most prominent and, and uh, accomplished uh, assistant United States attorneys in Seattle, a, a gentleman by the name of John Lelegin, uh was of the Armenian diaspora. Uh, and uh, we have a very large Armenian community in Seattle, where I come from, uh, mm -hmm. and, and up and down the West Coast, particularly in Los Angeles, there's a, a large uh, yeah. Armenian community there. I have not had issues uh, that uh, deal with the Armenian community. Frankly, I don't think of all the, and I've been on the bench for uh, uh, 33, be 34 years shortly, uh, and I have never had an Armenian criminal defendant, but I've had a lot of other defendants. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Your Honor. Uh, it was a pleasure talking to well, you. It was a pleasure and, uh, talking to you. <laughs> Thank you. All Goodbye. Right.